watched your film, and it really is a film. <coughs> it's also a documentary, but it's a film in all aspects. And I watched it for a second time the other night, and you know, I couldn't have been more impressed. I'm just in, a huge fan of this film in particular, and how it fits with the other ones. But I, <coughs> I clicked off the light, done watching it. Then I clicked the light back on. There's something about the way you made that movie and what it reveals that just makes it a little hard to sleep. Um, and I know part of it is that, that the realization we live inside a turnkey security apparatus, but there also it's 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 part of the technique of filmmaking. And you talked about the feeling when you made it that it felt dangerous, and you've done your share of war reporting. So could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, I mean. <coughs> Well, for me, I mean, as a, as a filmmaker, as an artist, it's how do you not just provide information, you know, because news does that, but how do you sort of express something on emotional terms? And, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, and I think with this film, you know, I felt, you know, before actually Ed contacted me, I was already working on the topic of surveillance. And it's, and it's something that's very sort of pernicious and ominous that you start to feel, or if you, once you become aware of it or you think you're targeted by it. And it does give you the sense of not being able to sleep. I mean, that was kind of the, the feeling I felt for actually, you know, thanks to Ed, his first email. I mean, it was pretty soon after his first couple emails that I actually stopped being able to sort of be able to rest in the same way because I knew just how, how deep these powers go. And, but they're also, because they're sort of in the shadows, you, they're, they kind of get in your head in a different kind of way. Glenn, when you show up in the movie, and I've gotten you to know, I've gotten to know you well enough to know, you kind of wear life like a loose garment. You don't get riled by much. And you're just kind of like sitting down and getting to it. And is it that you've always assumed that your every move is watched and this is just another day? or? No, I think I masked the anxiety really well, if that was your impression. Um, <laughs> You know, I had spent the 16 hours on the plane ride from New York to Hong Kong looking through this extraordinary archive, the copy of which Laura had given me um, to, to use her copy until I got my own from, from Ed in Hong Kong right before I got on the plane. And so by the time I got to Hong Kong, I had a good sense of what the breadth and magnitude, not only of the spying was, but of what the story was going to be. And so there was so much going on in terms of uh, the threats that we thought might be lurking, um, the danger to our source, trying to assess our source to make sure he was reliable. <laughs> but mostly what I was focused on once I realized what these documents was, was just how do I get these to the public as quickly as possible? And so I was so single-mindedly focused, first on making sure that our source was who he was claiming to be, and that what we had was what he purported it to be. And then once I got that, um, I was just so, so eager to start putting it out into the world where I thought it belonged, that I think it was just that kind of focus that, that is what you're seeing. The, um, we're lucky enough now, uh, through Google Hangout, Ed, Ed, are you here? Yes, you're here. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear okay, me? Okay, so these guys show up, you go through the, that spy master protocol that you set up with Laura, I forget what the, what the secret word was. And these guys show up, and you had been corresponding with them. Were they expe what you expected them to be? Yeah, because we had sort of a, an asymmetrical relationship at this point. They were public figures. So as I was able to research them, you know, I had photographs of them. I knew what they looked like. I knew what their ages were. He worked for say he could look into our family. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked, actually, I, I, asked, him, I, asked, him, I asked him that but earlier. Like, it would be quite possible in a theoretical sense. <laughs> but, but when you look at her at NSA file, does it say, good egg, nice person? <laughs> well, actually, she was on the watch list. So that was, that was one of the reasons that I, I chose for her. Uh, to, to be sort of the, the, uh, the quarterback on this early on um, when I was having difficulty reaching Glenn. Um, 
was because she had been personally affected by this. Not only did she understand the programs, she had already spoken with uh, NSA whistleblower Bill Binney, uh, who was pulled out of the shower naked at gunpoint by the FBI um, due to, to trying to reveal some concerns about these programs in earlier years. So not only did she have a level of expertise on this, uh, I also knew that she was uh, in, involved with people who had a, a very high level of technical security. Yeah, and well, it, it's, when you, you combine said, these, they, she, they really made her sort of a natural fit. She chose herself. Right. That and Glenn wouldn't respond to your entreaties to encrypt. <laughs> so all in, it, it changed your life. It changed the life of people that you love. Um, it changed your life, changed your life. And now the great unfolding has happened across America, across the UK, across the globe. Are you happy with the outcome? I mean, I, you know, I, if you, I remember the first conversation I ever had with Ed when he literally said to me, the only thing that I fear is that I'm gonna unravel my life to make all this visible and transparent and that nobody will care. It'll just be kind of this apathy and indifference. And, you know, I remember the moment in Hong Kong when we did the first two or three stories and I was able to watch <laughs> Ed watch the global news explode with these stories and felt so gratified. And it's basically been like that for the last 18 months. I mean, if I go around the world as I did with my book, um, or we still do to talk about things or Laura's film, it makes an extraordinary impact because the intensity of the debate that has been triggered, not just in the United States, but globally, I think has changed consciousness about so many things. And that's beyond the concrete changes of companies being forced to encrypt and prove they're devoted to privacy so they don't lose a whole generation of users, or individuals using encryption, which really puts a wall between the government and surveillance. Um, but I just think the debate that we were able to have that we couldn't have before, not just about surveillance, but privacy in the digital age, and the role of journalism, and the dangers of government secrecy, and the role the United States plays in the world, when you start changing consciousness like that, um, it may take a while for it to happen, but there's no question that the changes that are engendered will be fundamental. And that to me is by far the most gratifying part of all of this. I mean, I, you know, there's everything you'd always, there's a couple redos that I, would, I wouldn't mind having, but I think, you know, when we were sitting around talking about possible outcomes, um, you know, with lawyers, I mean, sitting here with you is, was not one of them. And we, we really were thinking that there was some really potentially really bad possible outcomes. And, uh, and to have the, the, I think the international awareness, I mean, we, we I think, we had no idea how, how large a story would be. What do you say, Ed? You had the most skin in the game. I, I think everybody involved has paid uh, some cost or another. I mean, you know, I, I, I can't live with my, my family nowadays. I, I can't go back to my home. Um, it's, there, there's a lot of things that are out there, but it's incredibly satisfying to be a part of something larger than yourself. At the end of the day, there are more of us than there are of them. And as long as we work together and as long as we value our rights, we will be able to protect them and assert them in new ways.